pessimists don't change the world. Naysayers say you can't do it. Complainers complain about problems, but they don't solve them. Critics write words, but they don't write the future. Throughout history, it is the positive leaders, the believers, the dreamers, the doers that make the greatest impact, that transform organizations and ultimately change the world. So we think about leadership, it's believing in a brighter and better future. It's mm -hmm. believing in solutions. It's believing in going from point A to point B and rallying people to get there. That is leadership. And you're gonna face challenges along the way. You're gonna face adversity. You're gonna face setbacks. So optimism is essential. Life is not a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's a series of sprints combined with a boxing match. <laughs> right. You're not just running, but you're getting hit along the way. And research from Duke University shows that optimists work harder, get paid more, and are more likely to succeed in business and sports. And what these researchers found was that these optimists, because they believed in a brighter and better future, they took the actions necessary to create it. It became a self-fulfilling prophecy. So what we believe so often determines what we create. And if you don't have it, you can't share it. So it's essential that every day you are feeding yourself with positivity, with optimism, with belief, so that you can feed others, so you can transfer that to others, so you can overcome your own adversity, your own challenges, so you can stay calm and positive through it, especially optimistic through it, and then lead others in a positive way. And that's hard to do. So this is not Pollyanna positive. Let's get clear on this. Don't roll your eyes when we talk about this. This is not, and I'm not saying you are, Matt, but I know right. some people do when we talk about positivity. Right. This is this is not about seeing the world through rose-colored glasses. Right. This is knowing that you have the power to overcome the thorns. This is not about ignoring reality. It's about maintaining optimism, belief, and faith in order to create a better reality. So this stinks. This isn't good. What we're going through right now is really tough. Okay, how do we get through it? How do we overcome? How do we move forward in a, in a positive way with belief? That's what we're talking about here. So real optimism. And we don't allow negativity, which we talked about earlier, to sour our situation. But we're not going to sugarcoat it either. So we get very clear that this is real mental toughness. This is grit. This is optimism. This is belief. And I'm convinced that every day as a leader, you know, it's essential to feed yourself on a daily basis because negativity is always trying to sabotage you. Right. So you got to overcome the negativity. You got to weed and feed the garden of your mind. Weed the negative, feed the positive. And the more you do with gratitude, appreciation, some do meditation, some do prayer, you nourish yourself every day, the garden of your mind so that you can produce fruit in the lives of others. That's what I've done. I've rewired my brain from negative to positive. I am naturally a negative person. I'm not naturally positive. I've had to work really hard at it. So doing this has made me a much better leader. And I know this, being positive doesn't just make you better. It makes everyone around you better. That's why this principle is so important. And I look at Dabo Sweeney, his optimism and belief, how he turned around Clemson football, how he leads others. I've seen it firsthand. I look at Alan Mullally at Ford when they were losing $14 billion, he comes in as a CEO, had them profitable in a few short years. One of the greatest leadership feats in history. I wrote about him in the book. He defined his leadership style as positive leadership. I think about Donna Orinder and how she turned around the WNBA with her optimism and belief. Jamie Kern Lima, who is, is a friend of mine, she started It Cosmetics in her living room with her husband, Paulo, and she just wrote a book called Believe It. And her belief, carried them through the darkest of times when they almost went under several times to eventually a few years ago, selling her company to L'Oreal for $1.2 billion. So believing it makes a lot of money with it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, you, you got to believe it. If you don't believe it, you're not going to make it happen. Your most important job as a leader is to create the culture of your team and organization. Culture is not just one thing. It is everything and culture drives everything in your organization. It's not just one person, it's everyone. So it's understanding that everyone in your organization creates the culture of it. It's not just leadership, it's not just you, everyone creates the culture. And so culture is dynamic, it's not static. So every day you're creating your culture by what everyone thinks, by what they say, by what they do on a daily basis. 
And a big part of creating culture is to identify what do we stand for? What do we want to be known for? Because once you know what you stand for, every decision you make is easy. What are the values and principles that will drive us? What are our standards? And when you become very clear on that, the culture becomes easy to create because then you can reinforce those very things that you see on a daily basis. Consistency creates culture. People always ask me, what's your definition of culture? It's the living, breathing essence of what an organization values, believes, thinks, says, and does. Culture is something you can feel because it comes from the essence of who you are. But as a leader, you are driving that culture. We all need a vision. We all need a purpose. We need a telescope and a microscope as a leader. So you pull out your telescope. Where are we going and why are we going there? Then what's our microscope? What are our zoom focus actions that we will take each day to realize the picture in the telescope? And as a leader, you are a dealer in hope and your people need a North star to know where they're going and to know the purpose. We don't get burned out because of what we do. We get burned out because we forget why we do it. Every job, every business is a vehicle to live and share a bigger purpose. I met a mortgage broker and she said her job was to save marriages. <laughs> because if she helped people keep their homes, right. if you keep your home during a recession, during a downturn, you're more likely to keep your marriage intact. So her right. job was to help people refinance to save their marriage. So there's always a bigger purpose that you can find in your job. I love the old Dominion Freight Line tagline. Their mission, their purpose is to help the world keep its promises. Mm. Their logistics company, their freight lines, they are drivers of trucks and yet what they're doing is helping the world keep its promises by delivering what was what is supposed to be somewhere at a certain time coming from somewhere else and they're the transportation that provides it i love it right yeah you, you could just focus on these trucks and what they do in this fleet of, of vehicles or you can focus on we help the world keep its promises that's inspiring one of the biggest mistakes that leaders make is they don't address the negativity that exists and it eventually and it so often sabotages far too many organizations. And so just this one principle, if you as a leader deal with this and focus on this, you will build a more high performing team and organization instead of having negativity sabotage what you're trying to build. One person can't make a team, but one person can break it. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So we do have to address the negativity that exists. And I think of Nick Nurse. Nick Nurse is the coach of the Toronto Raptors. And when he took over as the head coach two years ago, he put an elephant on his desk. It was a reminder they were going to deal with the elephant in the room mm. and have important conversations that needed to be had. So anytime a player or a coach walked in, they saw that elephant. Things were not swept under the rug. They dealt with the issues. And he had some really tough conversations that year with his team. And if he doesn't have those conversations, if he doesn't deal with the negativity, they don't win an NBA championship that year. I know that for a fact. I know some of those conversations I can't share, but I know that he turned things around as a result of addressing it. The US women's soccer team on their march to win the World Cup a few years ago, would have a meeting after every game and they would have a debrief and they would talk about who messed up and and what went wrong and who missed their assignments and so forth. And Ali Long told me no one took it personal because they all wanted to be great together. Mm. Small ego, big mission. But again, they were dealing with the negativity. They were confronting it. You got to create the framework. You got to create the, the rules of engagement, the standards of behavior. This is how we do things here as part of our culture. Everyone understands it. Everyone understands this is how we engage. This is how we have difficult conversations. This is how we address negativity. And when you do that, you make it so that negativity doesn't sabotage your team and organization. You got to communicate to build trust and you have to make sure that you fill the voids because where there's a void in communication, negativity will fill it. <laughs> so we always have to make sure we're filling that void with positive communication or just clear communication because right. it's not always going to be positive, but it can always create a positive result if you don't have the voids there. So communication is essential. Then there's connection. It's not just about communicating. It's about communicating to connect, building a bond of trust. Trust is the currency of leadership. If people don't trust you, they will not follow you. So you have to make sure you're connecting and great leaders foster connection with their individual team members. So they foster that one-on-one -on -one connection, 
but they also foster connections amongst their team members and their organization. So you got to be a connector and make sure you're connecting people in the organization and on your team. So we got to communicate. We got to connect and foster connections. We got to commit. We got to demonstrate commitment. That's where serve comes in. Mm. You have to commit to be great. You have to serve to be great. And commitment always looks like service and sacrifice. So how will I put the team first? How will I commit to them? And commitment will always cost you something. Cost you time and energy and effort. You could be spending that time at home. You could be spending that time talking to one person, but instead you're talking to this person. Investing in them. That's important as a leader. They have to know you're committed to them. When you are committed to them, you will get commitment back. That's just the way it works. And so commitment is everything. Leaders go first. They lead the way. They may eat last, but they go first. <laughs> and they lead the way and they show what commitment looks like and then they get commitment back as a result of that. So, if you want a committed team, you have to be committed. Stop looking for your team to be committed without you being committed as a leader. Leader, you commit. You show the way. You lead the way. And when you do, your team will improve because of your commitment. And then there's there's care. You have to care about others. You have to care about your team. And I'm convinced that a leader who cares builds a team that cares. Mm -hmm. I think of I think of Daniel Scott from Mayacoba in Mexico. I was just there speaking and spending time with my family. He's the GM of the Rosewood Mayacoba Resort. And he asked the question, how can we create community and impact our community? He's the guy who cares deeply about his staff, about his guests, but also about his community. So he partnered with a local principal of a school of 120 kids in a dilapidated building. It was basically a cement structure with no doors, no windows. That was their school, no resources, no money. They were about to be kicked off their land. Daniel meets Raquel, who's the principal of the school, and he agrees to find a way to fund a school. He gets his family involved, he gets the owners involved, he gets his guests involved, the resort, and somehow some way they're able to build this incredible school that now houses 300 students impacting lives, transforming futures, families. I mean, if you saw this area and you think about these kids going to the school, how the school is going to impact these kids and their future, it's going to be incredible. Mm. And now they're building a high school. Oh. Oh wow. It was amazing. My wife and I and our daughter and her boyfriend, we went to serve and served breakfast to them on Thanksgiving Day. It was special. And we're all in now. We're now investing and we're going to be one of the supporters and donators of funds to the school to help build the high school and and more. All because this one leader cared. Think about that. Think mm -hmm. about what happens if you care about your team, you care about others, you care about your community. You can't just do it because the book says so or, you know, oh, check the box. It says I, I'm supposed to care. <laughs> no, you got to really care. It's got to come from the heart. And as a right. leader, when it does, a leader who cares builds a team who cares. We hope you found this video valuable. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and opt in for notifications so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. If you'd like to learn more about the speaker in this video, there's a link in the description below. Also, before you go, would you like access to a free in-depth video training on how to dramatically improve employee engagement and retention? There's a link to that free training as well in the description below. Until next time, we wish you great success building a world-class team or organization that makes a positive impact in the lives of your team members.